Hey guys and gals, welcome to the Friday edition of Miyagi Mornings. I think this is uh, 45, is that right? It's either 45 or 50. It has to end with a 5 or a 0 because it's a Friday and we didn't miss any yet during any weeks. Um, this one I'm going to do is an email that came in. I thought this might be something that uh, probably affects a lot of people out there with concerns when it comes to providing your own feed for poultry. Um, this is from Kevin and he says, I feed my small flock of chicken and ducks Lots of kitchen scraps, in addition to all the leftover garden and fruit tree leftovers. They also get to eat and pick at any bones left from steaks when I clean fish, or when I clean fish. I also feed them old bait, fish carcasses, and crab shells. To put this in perspective, I did throw two 15-pound black drum to the birds, frozen and cut into thirds over a few weeks. Dogs wouldn't eat the fish, but the chickens loved it. I'm going to pause there a second. Do not offer fish like that to dogs, because they might eat it if it's not boned or cooked. Um, black drum is a saltwater fish, so I'm not worried about parasites in that situation really at all. Um, but fish bones and dog throats do not go together. Chickens are gonna eat away from it. So just not all dogs would turn, turn that down. Um, <clears throat> we have roughly 10 chickens and 10 ducks. I also raised 20 meat birds as needed. I ordered the next batch of 20 this week. Plan to eat the males first due to the size and keep the rest in the yard as a backup food source. We don't have much freezer space. I'm not very picky about how much food the main flock gets. The price of feed is worth the entertainment and delicious food. I'd like to dial in the meat birds. The starter and feed rations are quite a bit more expensive. How do I calculate how much protein I'm feeding the meat birds and the flock and keep the protein high enough for good growth and egg laying? Here's the answer. You're not gonna. You're just not gonna. When you start feeding birds this varied assortment of waste stream. You're not gonna. The only way to do it would literally be to weigh everything that goes into the feed, get the best estimate of the protein counts of all of it, measure the utilization of the, the out amalgamated feed, right? So it would have to be weighed before and after, and then calculate that as the best estimate. Does that mean you shouldn't do it? No, doesn't mean it at all. This idea that we're going to always feed bird X for purpose Y, protein ratio Z, is very, very modern. So people have been raising animals for animal products and for slaughter for, for meat for almost as long as human beings have had enough wherewithal to kind of band together and put up any sort of infrastructure to handle animals. And there is no need for us when we're feeding an incredibly varied diet to get too fiddly about the protein unless we know, unless we know there's not enough protein available. I've said this this week when I did a show about chickens on the podcast. We look at birds and we think they're stupid. And let's be honest, we're talking about an animal with, at best, an actual pea brain. Like, we're not talking about a higher organism. Like, the difference in the intelligence level between, let's say, a chicken and a dog is, is astronomical. But they're not stupid. They know what they know well. And they're designed to be survivors. And as long as you're making sure there's enough protein available... They'll eat the protein they need. And they'll probably end up a lot healthier doing it that way than, you know, we're going to use, because this is a meat bird grow out, 22% protein feed. I am big on making sure that the feed that has that ratio is available to them. And the way I know that I'm doing my job is the less of it they eat, the better the job I'm doing. So since this individual, and I'm not sure if he's doing this 100% free range, or maybe he's uh, tractoring or paddocking the meat birds. I'm not sure which one it is. But either way, these birds are out. They're scratching the ground. They're eating insects, right? Right there, you're going to get the protein up. If you want to kind of push it over, get a big giant bag of something like uh, mealworms, 
or black soldier fly larva and throw a small handful, you know, let's say per dozen birds, a half a handful a day, add it in as a kicker. Uh, you're feeding fish waste, you know, and people go, oh my God. And then they'll go buy organic freaking chicken feed. And you look at like the first, second or third ingredient is what? Fish meal. You know, I don't have a problem with that. Just, yeah, keep it away from the dogs. I've had dogs eat whole live fish before. My dog, Charlie, I took it fishing one time and I caught a, a golden shiner about that big. And, it, you know, they have a soft mouth and it flipped off the thing and he grabbed it and it was crunch, crunch, and he took off. And I'm like, I, you know, so they'll probably be okay. I just, when I think about the structure of fish bones and dog throats, I'm, I'm not a fan of maybe taking that approach. Um, I also would be a little bit leery of feeding raw fish waste um, to any animal under my care if it was uh, a freshwater fish. Uh, there's probably a lot less parasitic risk to a chicken than to a human with that. We have a different physiology and different digestive system, etc. But if I were going to do this with freshwater fish waste, you know, I would just get a big strainer basket and a big pot with a propane burner, and I would just put them in boiling water, even just a minute. That's gonna bring the temperature up to where those parasit parasites can't, you know, you gotta boil rolling water 10 minutes to make, no you don't, no you don't. I'm not even gonna get into that today. That's just that's just some bullshit somebody wrote down and people repeated. That's, that's complete crap. You know how long you gotta boil water to make it safe to drink? Yeah, zero seconds. By the time your water gets hot enough to boil, it's already pasteurized. I'm, I'm not going to go into that today. But same theory, like you give it a shock of that high heat, just let's, let's kick off any of the parasites and uh, then go ahead and feed that through your birds. And that's what I do. Like when I have fish waste that I want to give my chickens, I just take a strainer and, and, and boil it for a couple of minutes and then let it cool and give it to them. Uh, and you're right, they'll, they'll process it well. And I put that right into my composting system and so they it looks like somebody sat down with like toothpicks tweezers and a microscope they they pick and there's nothing but bones it looks like something that belongs in a museum when they're done with it and then you just kind of turn that into the compost and that breaks down with the composting process and it's fantastic with meat birds i would not try to go feed free I just wouldn't. I would, I would, again, and this is why I talked about this yesterday with guarding, but in so many ways, record keeping is so important. When you're feeding, you can actually do what I said. That's why it gets used in warehouse, you know, style, you know, KFOs and stuff like that, because they can. And that way they can actually dial in that protein to the exact requirement. And remember, that's the minimum requirement that the animal needs to grow out in 8 to 12 weeks so they can process it. That's what that means in their world. And it may not be the healthiest for them. They may be better off on a little less and taking you a little longer to get there. Uh, I find people that do pasture poultry, even that use Cornish crosses, that don't try to give them 100% of feed from feed, that actually you put them out there, uh, they get a lot less like leg breaks and things like that that, are, that, that breed is particularly famous for. Um, you're in a different world here. You're not trying... Like if you go an extra week before your cock rolls out of that meat run are big enough to harvest. It doesn't, it doesn't put you out of business or something like that. So don't try to go completely away from the feed, get the feed with the protein requirement that they need, and then start looking at feed utilization. And so the, the metric, for instance, because I'm more experienced with ducks than I am with, uh, with chickens. The metric for ducks, and specifically some of the breeds that I raise, to be healthy, happy, energetic, and going on about their business and producing eggs is 0.4 pounds per duck per day. And if you have even 20 ducks, right, that, that adds up. You go through a 50-pound bag pretty quick at that rate. I, when I was doing a large commercial flock and I had to make money, went for a quarter, 0.25 pounds of food per duck per day. Right now, when I look at the utilization, I'm down to about 0.2. So about half of what's required. That means without getting complicated in this, between all the other scraps and things they get and all their foraging, they're, gonna get, they're getting about half their diet from that. And that number goes lower at certain times of the year. 
And that's going to be right when protein's at its peak. So they're only going to get so much protein from vegetative matter. They get most of their protein because they're predators. The chickens are as well. And if you don't think they are, let them out and watch. So in the summer when the grasshoppers peak, I'm down to a utilization of feed rate now of like 0.1 to 0.15, depending on how it fluctuates. And I'm not trying to dial it in. I don't worry like, okay, so is the balance enough or too? No, I just let them be. So just make sure, like, look at it like managing bees. You feed bees because you don't know that they're getting enough from the land, but you only feed them as much as they take. And you let them go out and work. And the more there is to work, the less you feed. Same thing. Again, folks, we've been doing this a long time. Don't sweat it. Um, I've asked Jeff Lawton to get back to me. He has a video he, called Chicken Tractor on Steroids. If y'all want to check and see if you can find it, let me know about it. If you can find a copy of it. I didn't have time to look today. But this is where he built a chicken tractor compost system that kind of went around his gardens. And he fed his chickens 100% from a waste stream. No grain, no chicken feed. And they took a couple of weeks to kind of like accept it and, 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 and get on with it. But in the end, they ended up producing great quality eggs, etc. Now, I don't think... If you lock those birds up in a place without a lot of insect activity and things like that, without access to the ground, you can do that and have them be healthy. I, I don't think that's the case. But if they can go out and forage, even tractored, if the tractor gets moved enough and they're working the ground and they're eating beetle grubs and stuff like that, this is not as complicated as, you, as you've been led to believe. My last analogy, because I love analogies to help people understand things. When I was a kid... And you were, you know, reading hunting magazines and stuff like that. You would read articles about this new rifle. And it would be like, well, that comes in 308, 306, 270, whatever. They just, that's, that's all, you know, like, here's your caliber options. And no one was like, oh, gee, I wonder if a 270 is good enough to kill a deer with. You know, and you might hear a little bit about new ammunition lines and stuff like that. But mostly it was just, hey, here's how to hunt. You open a magazine today about hunting and, you know, you have all these advertisements for these super bullets and these perfect mushrooms. And, you know, it's like the 227 Super B on steroids with a half twist of the 338 Lapua thrown in because those deer are armor plated now. Right. And, and because of this constant marketing push to here's the latest and greatest round from Marlin with a soft tip so it can go into a lever gun, just like your daddy killed a million deer with. But you need it now because the deer have Kevlar jackets. They've made people start to question the efficacy of, of rounds that have killed so many deer. You know, like if you need more than a 3006 to shoot just about anything in North America, you are the problem, not the round. Right? And it doesn't mean I don't like these hotter rounds and stuff like that. But they, they're, they serve a purpose, but we don't need them. Right? And that same confusion has been put into every place where we've put overloads of information and convinced people that like there's some sort of horrible person if their meat chickens are getting 20 versus 22% protein or whatever. It's not the case. Those regimented feeds exist because we started putting birds into confinement and other like protein levels, right? In all these animal feeds, they exist because we confine animals. As soon as we take away the confinement, it's not that we don't have to worry about it. We just have to worry a hell of a lot less. Hope you guys enjoyed the week. I'll be back next week with another week of Miyagi Mornings. Remember, you can catch this episode and all the rest of the week's episode in audio format only, right in the Survival Podcast feed that goes out on Saturday mornings, Miyagi Mornings weekly recap. And if you want to contribute to Miyagi Mornings, you want to tell me what you want me to talk about, you're like, this jerk, I wish you'd talk about this instead. Get on MeWe, hook up with me, become my friend, Right at the top of my profile is a sticky post. You want to submit content? That's the place to do it. Take care, guys.